Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you quickly how to register subcortical areas to MNI template. This will be a very quick method. The reason why I'm doing this video is because one of my collaborators, Michel Morel from Maastricht University, recently asked me how to quickly register some anatomical data that she acquired at 70 to MNI space, but only concerning the subcortical regions and more specifically subcortical regions around thalamus. As usual, let's start by having a look at our data. So first, I'm going to quickly show you the dimensions of one of the data sets. My first data is the MNI template that is at 0.5 millimeter isotropic resolution. And more specifically, this is the MNI ICBM-152 T1 weighted image. So this is Talara nonlinear transformed and asymmetric 09B. And you can see that this is at 0.5 millimeter isotropic resolution. So let's load it here to ITK snap first. Okay, this is the MNI data, all good. And now I'm going to load one of the subjects that we want to align to MNI space. So this initial data is at 0.7 millimeter isotropic resolution. And you can see it by using NEMAT program and looking at here. In ITK snap, first thing I'm going to do after loading the my moving image as an additional image, I go to tools and registration. So here I navigate to manual tab and I make sure that the interactive tool is highlighted. Okay, now there are several strategies, but what I would like to do is to switch to the cursor mode and then put my cursor to align to corpus callosum in that this way. And then I go to my data and make sure that interactive tool is selected and I move the edge of my corpus callosum to roughly to the same region. Okay, after doing that, I switch to the cursor mode again and now have a look at the anterior portion of the corpus callosum. And then I see that there's a bit of angulation there and using the wheel I adjust it like so. So after doing this step, my data is like very roughly aligned to the MNI space, orientation wise and roughly in, in space wise, but just for the subcortex. Okay, now I can deactivate the interactive tool. And now the crucial part here is that we are not just going to register them um, for the subcortical regions. And to do that, I'm going to select my brush, increase my brush size to the maximum and select the 3D option. And now here, roughly draw an, an ROI around subcortex. So this doesn't need to be so precise. So now I'm navigating a bit upwards and again draw around subcortex to get the thalamus nicely. And I think this is okay for now. Once this mask is drawn, I switch to my individual subject T1 weighted data that is coming from MP2 reg sequence and to focus on the registration tab. I use the affine as my transformation model and image similarity metric is mutual information. This is fine, but I activate use segmentation as mask, which means that the program will only optimize the registration within this mask, which is what we want to do. Also, as you can see, the outside is a bit too noisy in MP2 rage image in this way. And here for the coarsest level, I'm going to select 2x and the finest level 1x. This is because we already aligned manually our image roughly to the MNI space. And this is an important step and more fail safe rather than using it just automatically uh, because we already have a like a rough initial alignment. Now I'm going to click on run registration and see what happens. So you can see that it is translating a bit, rotating and then shearing as well, because we use the affine transformation model and not rigid. You can see that the cost metric is decreasing as it registers. And first it is doing it at a 2x downsampled, uh, like a more coarser regime. And then at the 1x, that is our uh, voxel resolution regime. And you can see that the 
cost metric is again decreasing nicely. Okay, so now what I can do is that by using the brackets keyboard buttons, I can switch between two images. And you can see that already Thalamus is rather nicely aligned for a linear transformation, of course. We are not talking about nonlinear methods here that would give even more precise alignment. But using a fine for a linear transformation, and just by focusing on the thalamus, of course, I'm not even looking at the cortex. This is pretty good. What I like to do is to actually run this one more time. Because sometimes it uh, optimizes a little bit further. So after running it the second time, you can see that it still optimizes a bit further the registration by decreasing the cost metric in this area. Which means that it was a good idea to run it twice. Okay, now let's compare it again. Maybe even a little bit nicer. Okay, so I am happy with this rough linear alignment for the subcortex. Now I'm going to save my transformation matrix. Um, and let's call it sub02 to MNI. Okay, and now I can reslice. And it generates this third image. I am pressing S to basically enable, disable the registration map. But in this third image that is resize, now I can save it. And I can call it the same way, sub02. Now I'm being quick. Register to MNI. Okay, we finish. Um, and that should be it let's see yes our file is here um, okay so now I'm going to show you how to put this data to Brain Voyager because Michelle actually wants to analyze data within Brain Voyager which is of course more than fine let's open Brain Voyager and now let's use the nifty import option of brain browser i click on open nifty now i navigate to my data here subject 02 registered to mni i open it it gives me the headers that it has imported which would be good to check actually if this import is correct okay my data is here it looks correct of course double check your orientations as usual just in case. But now the gray matter looks a bit too dark. Well, this is rather straightforward to handle. You can go to options and contrast and brightness in Brain Voyager and then change the contrast and brightness a bit. For instance, as so. You can now save it. Okay, now this file is roughly registered I mean, just for the subcortex, I think it works good enough. Let's open the MNI data and now let's link the VMRs. So now wherever I click here, it will show me the same area in the other file. And see, switching between files, actually for the thalamus region, they are pretty okay aligned, given that we just spent a couple of minutes. Okay, this is all good. And just for completeness, I'm going to show you the other subject as well. So we can close this. And now we can just load our subject 5. That is the other subject Michelle wants to align to MNI. Add as anatomical image. And here I do the same, which is go to the manual, interactive tool. Determine the corners of the corpus callosum posterior side roughly go to interactive tool oops sorry align it there by dragging then look at the anterior portion go to interactive tool again and angulate in the right way okay so this is brain is a little bit different so maybe I can do like this a bit okay now they are roughly in the same position fine my region of interest is still the same because I draw it based on the MNI 
and now I can go to automatic registration. This is correct. Subject five, mutual information, affine transformation, and use segmentation as mask is selected. So now let's run and see if it will work. Okay, it looks all right. You can see that it is nicely aligned. Okay, now let's run it one more time for completeness. It adjusts a little bit more. Hopefully it does a bit better job. Second time. Now you can keep iterating, but in general I found two iterations like this gives me good enough results for a quick registration for subcortex. I mean, of course, one point is that this registration now can be used further uh, by combining it with more nonlinear tools like ANTS, for instance, or you can use it together with FSL uh, FNERT, uh, the nonlinear registration tool. Yes, I am satisfied with this. This is good enough. And now I am going to do the same, which is click to the button, save button, and say, I usually save this as convert 3D transformation files because sometimes I use the convert 3D uh, for resampling my data. It has a few other options for interpolating, especially not just linear, but other ones. Okay, subject 05 to MNI. Okay, and then I'm going to re-slice my data. Here, I'm going to save it. Subject 05 to MNI. Finish. Now I switch back to Brain Voyager. And now I can open Nifty. I can go to the subject 5 to MNI. Open. Quickly adjust the contrast. And there it is. Okay, hopefully you can see that for the subcortical regions, as a like a quick registration, this provides good results that can be achieved very fast. That's it for today. Thanks for listening.